All right, good afternoon and, uh, and welcome. We're uh, here on the, the semi-annual DEA Drug Take Back Day to kind of provide everybody an update on, uh, on what's going on with the, uh, the opioid epidemic in Fairfax County. Uh, we got a great team of people that are working this issue and you're gonna hear from uh, two of those agencies today, the Fairfax County Falls Church Community Services Board, better known as CSB, and the Fairfax County Police Department. Um, Working with uh, so many county and private partners, Fairfax County has been able to accomplish a lot, but there's a lot more that needs to be done. While overdose deaths decreased in the first three quarters of 2018, it's too early to say it's a trend, and the county's efforts with the opioid reversing drug naloxone may be masking some of the uh, extent of the problem that we have here in Fairfax County. As, as many people know, uh, overdose deaths exceed those from car accidents and homicides combined. Um, some of the things we've been doing more recently on the uh, on the Board of Supervisors is we uh, we've been giving a lot of additional funding to the to the problem and I'm gonna let their partners talk about some of those programs but 3.6 million in carryover funds an additional 1.47 million in the 2019 budget and the budget that we should be approving on Tuesday will have an additional 2.8 million that's funding a variety of programs to uh, educate the public raise awareness add police resources, um, enhance treatment programs, provide substance abuse prevention, uh, and, so, and support some education in our school system. Um, we, uh, we are returning the drug counselors to the schools. Um, we've got drug counselors back in seven of our schools, uh, effective December 2018. That was uh, something that, uh, that I've, been, I've been working hard on since I talked to a couple of our principals uh, several years ago that uh, one of the most significant budget cut items that impacted the, them was the, uh, was the removal of the drug counselors. So I'm happy to see those back in. Um, the board uh, authorized the county attorney uh, several meetings ago to, uh, to file suit against the opioid manufacturers to hold them accountable uh, for the impact that this opioid public health crisis has had on our community. Um, working with Delegate Hugo um, last year and this year, We've been able to uh, get past Amanda's bill, which, uh, which basically will make it a felony homicide effective July 1 if, our, uh, if, if for someone who provided a lethal dose to, uh, to, a, to an addict, these, these are the people that prey on our addicts. And, and addiction is a deep disease, but we need to hold the people accountable that are, uh, that are, that are profiting off of, uh, off of those addictions. Um, after, uh, after some effort, we've been able to get a program started in our jail um, for those that are facing substance abuse and opioid addiction. It's the STAR program, and that just started up just recently. Um, we are doing, uh, doing a lot with drug take-back boxes. We're, you're going to hear more about that later from Captain Corey. Um, we have a, a uh, drug court uh, that is now started up in, within the last year in Fairfax County. Um, we, uh, I understand we're starting our mental health court. We've got a veterans docket uh, as well, which will, uh, which will all help address the situation. Um, and with that, I think what I'm gonna do is, is go ahead and turn it over to some of our partners that we have here. And I'm gonna start with, uh, with our police department and have uh, Lieutenant James Krause come up and talk about a little bit about what they're seeing in the street. James. Thanks, Supervisor Harry. So first, I just wanted to address some of the trends that we're seeing in the police department. Um, we did, years ago, we were starting to see, as uh, the epidemic started to occur, the amount of opioid-related uh, deaths to increase. Um, however, over the last year, they've definitely have steadied out a bit. So we're averaging about 80 to 120 per year. Um, and they're probably, they're likely starting to level out because of all the awareness that's going on, all the efforts that the entire county is um, putting out there, the uh, availability in Narcan. However, the numbers that we're seeing are still way too much. Um, so back in July of 2018, the Board of Supervisors approved two detective positions and an analyst position to investigate these opioid deaths. And, um, and the objective is to investigate all suspected opioid deaths with the purpose of identifying and prosecuting the most culpable drug uh, distribute, uh, excuse me, drug dealers. And, um, 
and, and ultimately our goal is to, is to um, seek justice for the victims and long term to decrease the um, amount of opioids that are being distributed out there. And uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Detective Kathleen O'Leary to uh, talk a little bit more about what our opioid investigators do. My name is Detective Kathleen O'Leary. I have about 13 years on this department, and I think I can honestly state that this is probably what I feel one of the most important jobs I've had in this department. Uh, just being able to give uh, a voice to these families uh, and to these victims and actually going after and prosecuting these drug dealers, to me personally, is just extremely important. Uh, we are a brand new unit. We've only been around for about a year. We're the overdose investigative unit. We strictly work uh, overdose deaths that we believe has some sort of uh, opioid underlying issue as part of what resulted in death. Uh, we partner with Homicide, so we go out on the scene for Homicide with our crime scene detectives. We work very closely with them. Uh, and the Board of Supervisors gave us two positions and an analyst position. Uh, and so, as you can imagine, with the amount of overdoses the county has seen, we are extremely busy. Uh, and we have about 40 cases, uh, about 27 active, um, but on average, we go out to about an overdose death a week. Uh, and so we work those cases from the very beginning uh, until the very end. And sometimes these cases uh, could take years to actually prosecute. Uh, we're actually seeing cases from 2017 before we even existed uh, that we're now actually identifying witnesses uh, and dealers that we're able to go after now, almost two years later. Uh, and so uh, I just wanted to say thank you as a community for supporting us and giving us these positions and allowing us to go after the dealers finally. Thank you so much, Detective, and, and thank you to your team and, and everybody that uh, helps you do that very difficult work. And I, I know you get called out at all times of day and the night. We very much appreciate what you uh, what you do. Next, I'd like to bring up Lucy Caldwell from the Community Services Board to talk uh, a little bit about what uh, the CSB is seeing, what the CSB is doing to address the crisis. Thank you, Supervisor Hardy, and thank you very much to the police department for all the efforts and the new unit that has been created to investigate these deaths and overdoses. Um, as someone who worked in law enforcement communications for 24 years, I remember very well uh, some of the trends and the very difficult situations um, that oftentimes were caused by substances, not only heroin and opiates, but many other kinds of drugs, whether it's meth or cocaine. And since coming to the Community Services Board, we talk a lot about addiction and what we see in people who experience addiction and become addicted to drugs or alcohol even, um, oftentimes it starts at very early ages. And here at the CSB, we have different programs that are not only in the schools, as Supervisor Harity referenced, but we also have youth council. Uh, we're starting a new coalition, which one of my colleagues will be talking about a little bit more. But these um, issues and efforts are really going after uh, young people to try to educate them about addiction and that it's a disease, it's not a moral failing. People who fall prey to addiction, they do so for many, many reasons. Um, there is one thing I wanted to mention, uh, thanks to generous funding by the Board of Supervisors uh, that Supervisor Harity referenced, there is going to be a new campaign launching this week, a new communications campaign it will be targeted uh, generally towards the younger people. We're looking at the demographic who is using, who is overdosing, but we want other people to be aware of it as well. It's not gonna look like any other campaign you've ever seen from Fairfax County. Um, and you may have, it's very heavily digital, so you may have to be looking at uh, your children's phones or your college age uh, kids' phones to see some of these campaigns but we really want to get the message to people who are using it, hopefully to get them to think about it. We did a lot of research on this campaign. We actually had the PR firm come in to the CSB treatment sites and interview and do focus groups to learn about what it's like to fall prey to addiction of heroin and opiates. 
And one of the main takeaways from that was, uh, what I felt was very powerful, was the lost potential. They, this generation in their 20s has have been losing friends and colleagues and old friends from high school, and it's heartbreaking. My own sons who are in their 20s both know people who fall into addiction. Um, and these are people from all walks of life. It's not just the, uh, a stereotype of any one race or any one demographic or any one uh, economic uh, status. It's all people that it's affecting. So we really want to try to get the message out to the people who are using that there is help, help is available. People can come to the CSB anytime. That's the first step is that recognition. And so we need to do more to educate people about what addiction is and that it's okay and reduce that stigma of people not wanting to get help because they're afraid. They're afraid they'll be judged. So we do a lot of work with the schools, as Supervisor Harry mentioned, and work in the community trying to spread that word that it's okay, don't be scared, make that phone call. At CSB, we have diversion detox, we have a detoxification unit out in Chantilly. People can go there, um, or they can call, and they can come to Maryfield anytime. We really encourage people to do the walk-in or to give us a call at any time to take that first step to getting help because help is available, not just from CSB, but we'll get them started on the road to private resources too that people may not know about. And that's the main thing we're trying to do is provide help, information, and education, and to work with our partners from the health department, from the police department, and all across the other county agencies, and in NOVA, and the Dominion hospitals, and all the private treatment providers. We're really trying hard to get the word out that help is available, and the earlier you get help, you can live in recovery and you can live a successful life. It's another thing that CSB has, our peers. These are people who have lived experience. They've either had, either had mental illness or they've had substance use disorders and dependencies. And now they work for the CSB. So people listen to other people who walked in those shoes. And we're uh, hiring a lot of new peers so people can go to the CSB website and uh, learn more about all of this. And we're really thankful to be here today. Um, and I think uh, Leo has some more information. And I'll have him introduce himself about what we're doing in our programs as far as prevention. Thank you, Lucy. Um, thank you, Supervisor Parity. Thank you for the Fairfax County Police Department for having us today. I think that everybody has spoken about how important this opioid crisis is, is to the community, how it is to agencies, and how we're responding in a multi-agency fashion, because I think that this isn't a problem that is easily fixable, and it is something that is, is going to take a village. Um, so here at the CSB, like very, Lucy very much underlined, we are not only undertaking a tr treatment efforts for those that are suffering from addiction and suffering from opiate dependence, but we're also integrating the community in our prevention efforts with a, a lot of education, not only surrounding addiction and opiate dependence, but also in how can we identify um, people who are using, how can we identify people who might be struggling with mental health or substance use problems, and how can we encourage them and provide them with the tools and resiliency to overcome their obstacles. One of the things that we're doing is the revive trainings, which um, teach the individuals to identify somebody who might be using opiates, who might, might be encountering or suffering from an overdose, and how to provide naloxone, the possibly life-saving drug in the communities. Now, this isn't, this isn't a solution that is just for one um, members of our community, this is something that we want to get out there to anyone because the possibility of saving somebody's life and giving them the opportunity for recovery, I think, is the most important thing in our efforts. And I think this is something that we want to integrate into every member of Fairfax County because it is something that we want to put out there into the community, not just in specific areas, but to every community member of Fairfax County, Falls Church in Fairfax City. Um, another thing that we have intersecting is our new campaign that's about to be rolled out um, called Lock and Talk. And Lock and Talk is that intersection between um, suicidality and opiate use and loss of life. So one of the things that we'll be providing the community and providing more education on, much like the Drug Take Back event, 
does on a national level is locking up your prescription medications and sort of eliminating the ability for um, others in the community to um, either steal or take prescription medications, which sometimes lead to opiate dependence and opiate overdose. And last but not least, I think one of the things that we're really trying to promote within the county is community engagement. And one of the ways that the CSB is doing that is by, in collaboration with the community's um, anti-drug coalitions of America, we're creating a CSB coalition for all regions. And what we're trying to do is interact with different sectors of the community, whether it be county agencies, whether it be community organizations, business organizations, parents, and including youth, to have a say in how we do and what we do in our community. Not only is it mental health, not only is it substance use, but how do we encourage communities to identify the problems that they're seeing and identify a response that's gonna work for them. Because I think that the most powerful thing that we can do is empower communities to work with each other for each other. So with that, I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Leo. Uh, next, we're gonna hear from Captain Eli Corey on uh, some of the things that are going here in the West Springfield Station on the Drug Take Back Program. Thanks. Good afternoon. Uh, so we all know that the opioid uh, epidemic is a crisis across the nation. And at Fairfax County, we've seen our share here. Uh, I can tell you the Fairfax County Police is committed to saving lives. One of the things we've done to further that is issue our patrol officers Narcan. That's uh, an opportunity for officers, first responders, as soon as they get to a scene, they can administer the chemical and hopefully save lives if an, uh, other emergency personnel isn't there quite yet. Um, the other thing is, and we've heard it here today, this is a community problem. This isn't just the Fairfax County Police, this isn't just an agency problem, this is a community problem, and we all need to take some ownership of it. One of the ways that we can all partner together to make sure that drugs don't get into the wrong hands is bring your outdated or old drugs uh, or pills to any police station in Fairfax County. Uh, I'm happy to report that now every police station has a take back box for outdated old pills, drugs that you have laying around the house uh, for you to dispose of properly. It only takes a few minutes, go through your cabinets, clean it out, we're open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every holiday, um, we'd be happy to take this. Uh, please, any police station, we've got eight of them, uh, headquarters, eight police stations, bring those drugs by um, and let's clean up the community. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, for time. All right, and as you've heard today, this is clearly a, a community effort. It's a, it's a team effort. Uh, our Fairfax County partners are working hard. CSB and the police department are on the front lines of uh, in addressing this uh, this crisis, and it is a d d disease, not a failure of, uh, of, of morals. And uh, we, need to, we need to make sure we work hard to, uh, to reverse the stigma. As I kind of, every, every time I go out into the community and talk at HOA, I, I talk about this because I think education is important. So since this is Drug Take Back Day, I'm gonna go right back to the beginning and, and talk about what uh, Captain Corey uh, mentioned. And, and, and it really, 75% of heroin uh, addicts start with prescription drugs, and we need to get those prescription drugs off the street. So as I remind our, our, uh, my constituents every chance I get, get them out of your medicine cabinet. But also, if you know somebody that's been prescribed opiates, whether that be a family member, a community member, uh, son, daughter, you know, grandparent, watch them and make sure that they, uh, make sure that they don't get addicted because it, it is easy and it happens across our community. And with that, with that, I want to thank everybody for uh, for being here today, and uh, let's go out and see what we can do to to end this crisis. Thank you.